Welcome to our battle of the Toyota hybrids. For 2023, we've got the all new Prius. Brand new, never looked this good before in any color. And over here on the red corner, the Corolla hybrid, which for 2023 adds all wheel drive for the very first time in a Corolla. I'm gonna put these two to the test, not just for fuel economy, but with technology and performance. Yes, performance in a Toyota hybrid. Let's go. The big news for 2023 is that both of these cars can come with all wheel drive. It used to be that you had to buy a larger, more expensive Toyota SUV to get a hybrid with all wheel drive, but not anymore. The style has gone up, the technology has, and even though the Prius has been the leader for hybrids, the Corolla hybrid is really a strong contender. Powertrains. The Prius has a lot more power, almost 200 horsepower, 194 net with all the electric motors. This is only 138. And you ask yourself why? Well, this is a two liter four cylinder and that's a 1.8 liter. Only now they're pairing both of these cars with all wheel drive. It's an option, it's only 1400 bucks, but check out what you get. You don't get any more extra power or torque, that stays the same versus the front wheel drive cars, but the fuel efficiency does drop a little bit. But look at these numbers. Where are you getting that in any car, all wheel drive or not? You just can't beat them. Now the Corolla has a few totally different EPA numbers depending on which of the four trims you get. The Prius also changes. These trims are the top trim, so they have bigger wheels and that means less fuel efficiency. There's more rolling resistance with those tires. They look spiffier, but they do cost more at the pump. But still, either of these cars can push 45 MPGs with no issue. For the first time ever, you choose the Prius for style over that Corolla. This is a brand new feature on the Prius because it was never known for that. Toyota has so many other hybrids these days that it's taking extra risk with the Prius. And why? Because it can. And look at all the details. Even in the front of this car, it shares the same kind of headlight treatment as the Corolla, but it's got this kind of shark nose treatment and these fins that go over the headlights. That's undoubtedly also to help for aerodynamics, as are these brand new 19 inch wheels. 19s have never been a thing on the Prius, yet they're still very skinny, only 195 millimeters in width. Try finding that at your local tire shop. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Now the windshield is extra raked and that does intrude on cabin space. But what it does is that it takes the highest point of the roof and it puts it further back. It adds to the sleekness, takes away some of that eggness. That's what I like to call it. This windshield is so far raked, it really reminds me of a Lamborghini or a Corvette, something like that. Once you're inside, it feels like you're in a spaceship. And the outside, it's just extra, extra sleek because when you look in the back, there's no door handles, it's on the side. Racing cars in the 60s introduced the Comtail. That's what you see here. It's an aggressively sloped rear roof that ends abruptly. It worked then for aerodynamics and it works now just even better for the Prius. That's the main feature here and it looks pretty cool. Forget about the fact that it has a panoramic roof and it's black versus blue and all these extra LEDs. We've seen that before. There's actually flowing fenders out the back that give this car an almost kind of Porsche feel to it. Prius never ever looked this good and you're not gonna find it on the Corolla. The fact that it's on a Prius and I'm saying these things about a Prius should make you consider one for just that reason alone. The Corolla has a conventional sedan body. You got a short hood, a big cabin, and a short trunk. But it's stubbier and it looks more ordinary next to that Prius. This SE trim with the optional red paint and the LED headlights that look really almost like a Lamborghini from the side, they're Y-shaped, and these 19-inch gray wheels, that's exclusive to the SE. It jazzes this car up a bit. No, it's not fast, and it's not supposed to be, but it's more practical, it's easy to see out of, and it's easy to get in and out of. All of those things might make this car a better choice. The back of the Corolla also has some race car inspiration in the lower bumper designed to look like Venturi splitters that are designed to suck the cars to the ground on the racetrack. Well, it doesn't do anything here, that's just for looks. And so is this deck lid spoiler, which even the Prius doesn't have. That all aside, and you can get past the fakery, there's incandescent light bulbs versus the LEDs on that Prius, and that definitely explains why the Prius costs a lot more to start. Cargo space, 20 cubic feet, 13 cubic feet. And if you get the base Prius LE, 23. What's not to like? Well, this closes a heck of a lot slower than that. It's back to basics inside any Corolla, and it's also not. There's a nice two-tone interior, some decent materials, supportive seats, and really nothing to relearn or confuse you. 
I like that the Corolla Hybrid doesn't try to rethink everything. There's a normal PRND shifter. Cup holders right where you'd expect them, air vents, air controls, analog gauges, a digital one is optional, and basic controls on the steering wheel. You don't have to look anywhere or think about anything differently. You just get in and you drive. The one thing I'd like to see, a wireless charger that's only on the top XLE trim. And I would like to see this screen at least be optionally a little larger because it's a big bezel, but not a ton of real estate. There's more headroom than in the Prius, about the same legroom, a really cheap looking headliner, which I don't like, but what I do like, side airbags that deploy right here at the thorax level, and also airbag under the front passenger seat cushion. You won't find those in most cars, so there's 10 airbags in this little car. The Prius is so sleek on the outside, but inside this long rake here definitely cuts down on some headroom. It's also harder to see out the back than it is in the Corolla Hybrid. These seats are more comfortable and all the materials are a little bit better. The Prius now has a contemporary looking interior. The dash cowl is still very long, so it intrudes well into the cabin. And the steering wheel is also undersized. But besides from that, you get a big screen, new toggle switches, and materials that are definitely more upscale. A lot of things fit and feel better than they used to, and they are better than that in the Corolla. There's other unique touches, like these touch sensitive lights. Those also look pretty futuristic. This shifter remains, I've never liked it, but if you drive a Prius, you know exactly what it does. And otherwise, the car is pretty much simple. Everything is on this screen. There's less headroom than in the Corolla, but there's heated rear seats, available leather on this top limited trim, and a panoramic moonroof that I can adjust separately. So that helps. This eight inch touchscreen is standard on every Corolla hybrid. Features like navigation also are at a cost. You have to have a subscription for that, but at least it's available. You don't really need it because there's wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, and everything else here has been rethought out, meaning it works a heck of a lot better. It looks clearer than ever before. Toyota had a very old system, now it doesn't. This one also has over-the-air updates. There's not a ton of technology, but hey, it's here. And if you have other Toyota models, such as the Prius, you get more functionality, like 360-degree cameras. The Corolla Hybrid has analog gauges. The digital one is only on the top XLE. So you get a small color information display that gets pretty crowded the more you dive into all the various safety systems. A lot of stuff is standard, but without a Toyota manual, how would you know a BSM from a PDA to, from an RCTA? What's also interesting, there's a tachometer on a hybrid. Never really see that before on Toyota hybrids. Most of the time there's an energy gauge, and on the Prius, which is fully digital, you don't have one. The Prius has the same infotainment, only it's running on this optional 12.3 inch screen so much easier to adjust settings and see things like this. The energy flow. Made famous by the Prius of many generations ago, but you can adjust a lot of settings here so much easier than you can in the Corolla Hybrid simply because of the screen's real estate. There's also the same Amazon Alexa and Apple Music integration, plus, hey Toyota. <laughs> well, she's not working right now, but if you actually say it, hey Toyota, yeah, now she does. And you can search here in the keyboard. It's so much easier with a larger screen like this that you can't do in the Corolla Hybrid. Plus, it's got 360 degree cameras. They're not that great, but they're there. And there's also an automatic parallel and perpendicular parking system that is very advanced. It even adjusts how the car will back you into the space. This is way too much effort. It's better to just learn how to do it yourself. I'm thankful Toyota put the instrument panel in the driver's side as opposed to the center but look how the steering wheel blocks half of the display. Now, try to use some of the options in the display, especially all these icons, at a glance. And yes, there's lots of safety features, but this just needs to have a big cleanup. And you also can't customize a display like you think you would. It's not very good. I wish the visibility was a lot better considering how far away it is. The Corolla Hybrid is the weakest of the two. The all-wheel drive motor doesn't actually add any more power than a regular Corolla Hybrid. And compared to that Prius, it's got the 1.8 liter engine, not the 2 liter. It's still weird for me to say that the Prius is the sportier, more performance-minded Toyota Hybrid. It's really, really odd. 
There's slightly more noise with this motor, but again, once you get up to speed, everything drops down. And acceleration really isn't all that bad. If you're driving like a jerk and you're really wearing down the battery, then it will get slower, because once that battery is depleted, there's definitely not as much forward momentum. But if you're driving like most Corolla drivers are going to, you're gonna easily see the mid to high 40s in the MPG, and that is just fabulous. Even under full throttle, there's not much throttle really here, there's not much noise. That's the most impressive thing about the Corolla Hybrid, the fact that it's sealing out a lot of the vibrations, not just from the road, but from the engine itself. And because Toyota has been making hybrids for essentially three decades, you cannot feel ever when the engine is turning on and off. There are still some hybrids today, like say if you get into a Jeep, you can always hear that engine turning on and off, even under any throttle application, but not in the Corolla Hybrid and not in that Prius. For a compact car that's an economy car, it rides almost like it's a Camry. It's quiet, the seats are comfortable, it's really basic in here, but it's also got everything you would need on a commute. Pretty reasonable price. And for all this gas saving, I'm telling you, you just can't beat it in the segment. You won't. Like the Prius, the Corolla Hybrid's all-wheel drive system does not operate in all-wheel drive unless the wheel is getting turned. So, right now it's front-wheel drive. As I just angle it a little bit under throttle, the readout here will show me that the rear wheels are being lightly activated. I would like to see a snow setting among the three different drive modes because all we have right now are eco, normal, and sport. And I think having just a snow setting that would lock the all-wheel drive 50-50 so it spools up right away, that would be an easy add. But several of my colleagues have tested the Corolla Hybrid in the winter and they came away impressed. Like the Prius, when you turn the wheel of the Corolla Hybrid, you can actually have some fun because Toyota has tuned that into the steering, into the shocks, into every part of the car in the way that past Corolla models were never like that. Even on this SE trim, you get the bigger wheels and tires. You don't get any different tuning, so the all-wheel drive system doesn't step in any earlier or provide any extra fun features like active torque vectoring. It's not what the Corolla Hybrid is about. It's more about the security of having extra traction. When I'm driving this car versus the Prius, I feel like this is the conventional choice. It's the more practical, traditional approach to a small car. And the Prius, again, this is so strange to say, it's feeling like the sporty choice, the performance choice. And the brake regen, it's a little squishy. You have to put your foot down a little bit more, but if you've been driving Toyota hybrids for years, it won't feel any different. The Prius is the quieter car when you've gotten up to speed. It's also the quieter car under acceleration. Not by a ton. And, ooh, look at that. We're actually gaining more speed than you'd ever expect. When I used to drive Prius models, I would see the speedometer creep up in one single increment. So you'd see 41, 42, 43, and now it's just skipping everything. That's impressive. Because it's almost 200 horsepower here, and it's definitely noticeable. A, such a noticeable difference over that Corolla. Now, when I go around turns, I'm having more fun in the Prius. It's not just because the steering wheel is a little smaller. It actually feels a little more awkward because this dash cowl is so big. It's like coming right at my face. The windshield is coming over my face almost. I know it's not. That's how it feels. It's like a really like you're in this warped perception. But the steering is better. It's better feel and there's actually some decent handling, which the last generation Prius also had. But for just driving around the back roads, both are very, very good. It's just the steering in this car, a little bit more road feel, a little more turning, believe it or not. These are things that early Prius models never had. And like every Toyota car, SUV, crossover, every single one of them I've been driving has better steering response, better feel, better handling every single one of them. In all seriousness, there's a lot more power than you'd expect in the Prius. And you can actually keep up with traffic, you can accelerate in ways that you could never have done before. 
The Corolla is a bit more sluggish, but it's also the smaller car, so it feels more nimble, at least off the line it does, because now the Corolla Hybrid is offering more electric assistance off the line, thanks especially to the all-wheel drive motor in the back. And this will do the same, because for the most part, the Prius acts like the front-wheel drive Prius, whether it's all-wheel drive or not. This is the front-wheel drive model. But amazingly, as it's tuned now, even when pulling away from a stop, there's hardly any wheel chirp. So Toyota's really made the most of the torque and horsepower that it has, allowing you to actually tap into it when you're up at speed, and also not giving you too much torque, especially in this front wheel drive version. So tuning is pretty good. Another big difference of the Prius when you're on the move is that you don't really have to use the gas pedal as much. These tires are narrower, the car, the whole body, is just more slippery. That means there's less wind resistance, there's less tire resistance, there's less friction all over the place, from the engine to the drivetrain to everything. That's what made the Prius so famous. It was like that on purpose. It looked that way, it drove as slowly as it did because it was designed to achieve maximum fuel efficiency. Toyota is now able to eke out some more power and let you have more fun without sacrificing everything that made the Prius such an icon, because it truly is. It feels like you're gliding along a little easier than the Corolla. I don't hear as much of the road, I don't hear as much of the tires. And so when you're just on a back road, just relaxing, you do feel calmer. You don't have to work it as hard. But both of these cars handle pretty decently. If you test drive either of these cars, I think you'll be impressed with how well they steer, how well they grip, considering really the low performance that they're designed for. But that's not how either of these cars have felt historically. So in their latest generations, they truly are the best they've ever been. These days, I think it's proof that you can have fun in a hybrid. And even if you're going a little quicker, dipping a little more into throttle, enjoying the turns, you're still sipping gas. <laughs> really, how much gas can you possibly burn in a Prius or that Corolla? Even if I'm gonna do this. All right, what am I getting, 30 MPG versus 50? I mean, it's the best of all worlds, it truly is. If saving gas is on your priority list, look no further than the Prius, absolutely. It still tops out everything. And this is not the plug-in version, it's the regular one. It's still just so superb, and you just can't knock it. You absolutely can. And the fact that it drives even better than it did before. Brakes are also really nice, a little soft, but better feel than that Corolla Hybrid. The 2023 Corolla Hybrid starts at $23,050. Ours was $30,694 with some accessories like floor mats and with destination. There are four trims, and all-wheel drive is optional on every trim except the XLE. It's $1,400 extra. Now, the 2023 Prius. It starts at $27,450. There's three trims, and all-wheel drive is still the same $1,400. Ours, which was front-wheel drive and a limited, was $37,195 with destination. It used to be that the Prius was the most economical hybrid in Toyota's lineup, but now that's no longer the case. I usually like the prettier and the more powerful car, but not here. The Corolla Hybrid is the better play among both of these two. You're getting 80 to 90% of the Prius's fuel efficiency for way less money. And right now, who doesn't want to save money? You get in a car that's very dependable, still has a lot of technology and is comfortable. And what other compact car? I'm talking about compact cars, not crossovers or SUVs. They're delivering all of these features and the fuel economy for this price. They're not. So this is really kind of in a class of one, and among these two is definitely the better buy. And yes, that Prius is quite nice, and if you have more money, go ahead and take it. But for my money, it's Corolla 100%. What do you think? Go to cargurus.com. We've got listings of both these cars, and we've got more comparisons coming up. So subscribe, and we'll see you next time.